Hi there, welcome back to the Single Malt Review, where we are continuing our look at some of the core offerings from Glen Scotia, the mm. Venable Campbellton Distillery of some note. Yes, and this time it's going to be number two, mm. the double cask, yeah. which we have called the double wood in multiple, multiple other parallel realities, but oh, good grief, here we go, it's, it's a stiff one. Mm. It's not coming out easily. Um, double cask, and uh, the casks in question finished in, and this is slightly odd, finished mm. in mature American oak, and goodness knows what that means, um, and Pedro Jimenez sherry casks. Mm. So it tells, it's going to tell us the finish, it's not going to tell us the maturation, <laughs> and that tells me one thing, which is bourbon barrels. Mm. Um, oh, Glen Scotia do so, like their American oak. Yeah. So never mind uh, there. The current uh, description on the Glen Scotia website for the double cask is that um, it is matured entirely in first fill bourbon, then finished for up to 12 months in Pedro Jimenez, mm. which is slightly different to the description we have here. So we assume either a change in formulation or a change in presentation, marketing. Probably marginal either mm. way, so we won't, we won't worry too much. Either way, we'll have to have the you know, richness and, and lightness of bourbon casks but also the sort of punchy heavy yeah weight you get we, from the, the main thing we'll look for here is a sort of a darker heavier mm. um, maybe even richer character than the 15 yeah. which was purely bourbon it's it's a a juicy fruit lots of soaked sultanas mm. all kinds of good uh, and at least in the color yeah, goodness give you a close up there mm. that's um that's a couple of shades darker than the fifteen year old which fifteen. I and first. but it does share that remarkably bright golden that sort of real colour of mm. promise when it comes to whiskey. So um assuming they're not having us on and colouring these, mm. then um yeah that that's a really, oh. really, really good colour. There's no mention of colouring on the packaging, yeah. so or indeed on the website, so it could go either way. So that is oh, an goodness. immediate difference. Well, that is very sweet. And buttery, fruity, and a little bit spicy on the nose. Yeah, that that PX is <sighs> gone to work. It's really done its business immediately. Yeah. There, mm. that's that is a that is a that is a finish that has mm. latched onto that whiskey like a face hugger alien and gestated something completely different out of mm. out of the base bourbon maturation. That is a that's a supreme difference there. That yep. as Dave says, that's um, much much richer, much more red fruit. Mm. There's even some. Mm, there's even some marzipan going mm. along with sort of Christmas cake flavours. It does remind me of a buttery yeah. um, Christmas cake or a hot custody Christmas bud. It's very, very reminiscent of sweet things. That that marzipan is actually huge. There's mm. a lot of marzipan icing. That sort of um, that thick, firm white icing that no one actually really likes that you get on top of wedding cakes and Christmas cakes and things. Mm. Um, that that is first and foremost on the nose there and I can only assume that is coming from the PX that is really really striking so we'll see what's on the palate I'm mm. going to try and snap things along here because I think we went long on the last yeah. one to our, to our detriment and subscribers I'm sure so I'm going to keep the train moving 46% here. as was the case for 15 mm -hmm. year old Ooh, mm. that that is, I was about to say, that is really, really rich and amazing. Hmm. And then it kind of dropped out Yeah, there's a halfway through. Hot alcohol heat first up, then an immediate hit of those fruity, spicy, sweet flavours. But then it just it washes away very, really quite quickly. It doesn't leave much behind. Yeah, it's quite, quite sweet, fresh and fruity on the start. Hmm. But then there's kind of a void in the middle of the palette before yeah. the, like the 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 PX and the wood comes back in quite a bit later. Hmm. It's not a it's quite a long palette on it, but there is this curious gap hmm. in the center, and it's a gap that's kind of filled by slightly young tasting whiskey. Yeah, there's a bit of a flash in the pan at first. There's a good long, quite woody finish, hmm. quite nice and dry, a little bit just a little bit smoky. And now that I, now hmm. that I'm hunting for it specifically, there is quite a few indicators of um, young slash immature spirit here, which I think is kind of 
only letting it down. Mm. I'll see. This could make it a lot worse yeah. or a bit better. I'll well, put a bit of water hit in. of the um, vanilla and almonds. So the vanilla, obviously, harking back to those American mm. oak casks, almonds, reminiscent of the marzipan you got on the nose. It's a shame, actually, because the, the initial sort of burst fresh quality um, up front and the finish are actually pretty good. Mm. Um, it's just that, uh, that, that mid palate, which is, you know, I mean, that's, that's the majority yeah, of the whiskey. It's that's really broad. It's a little bit lacking. Um, odd that that's just so, mm. so vacant in this one. Mm. Oh, that's more like it. Yeah. There's now some lingering citrus and mango on the tongue. I think that few cherries. Yeah. That's that sort of mm. activated it a wee bit. Young yeah. whiskey is. It really, really does do well. Almost the younger the the younger the whiskey, the more water will benefit. Mm. Not in all cases. It's not a universal rule, but tends to be that if you've got young, fresh whiskey, then it'll do well for a bit of water put in. Mm. And I think this one does too. It doesn't really make it a hell of a lot more. Yeah complex there's still a bit of a void there but it helps to stretch everything mm. out and in doing so kind of fill in that hole yeah it's made the that warmth has uh, lingered further through the experience and mm. there's a good tacky sticky chewiness as well it coats the tongue for the entire it duration. kind of it kind of connects the start of the palate with the end mm. um which is <sighs> beneficial for the whiskey yeah it's something between those bookends now and it's really helped the experience mm. so that's yeah, quite weird i mm. think we are dealing with significantly younger whiskey than the 15 mm. um, I would pitch this at I think I can taste whiskey between and it will be between because it will be a mix sort of 6 and 10 years old oh. in here um, and I'm not sure which direction it's leaning mm. necessarily um, I'm not really that I wouldn't want to make that, that scientific a call about it because it is definitely not a scientific process making guesses um, but yeah whereas the, the first one I thought was a bit better without water it's almost essential to dose this one up with mm. a bit of water to enjoy it so that's quite weird really yeah um, and then for once it's a whiskey that though i'm not particularly keen on it um were it not for its finish it would be in a way worse spot yeah. um did this if this whiskey didn't have that px um to sort of boost the flavors and to round things out it would be in a really sort of bad mm. state, it would be sort of floundering um, in that absent mid palate with very little to to sort of float it mm. um, as a good whiskey experience. So yeah, yeah. good good call on the mm. on the finishing there. I just wonder if it wanted maybe just two more years, you know, for the base yeah. for the base maturation. The but, PX you know, certainly made the nose go to some amazing places. The smell mm. was excellent, but it doesn't quite deliver to the same extent on yeah. the tongue. Um not remotely as good as the mm. 15 as a complete package not for me anyway um perfectly pleasant mm. uh, i don't know what the price difference is um because i mean dave will have gotten these as a as a box mm. anyway so we don't really know how they how they differ i haven't actually noticed the 15 on the shelf so mm. i couldn't tell you whether you know by what margin it's more expensive than the other two um but i can I can guarantee it is because it's got a number on there and you pay for numbers when you're dealing with whiskey. Mm. Um, but yeah, th this one for me, it's only going to manage at 77. Oh. Um, it's just not, not pulling its weight in quite the same way as the first one. What mm. do you think? Well, I rate it lower than the first one as well, but it's an 84 for me. Mm. It's still up there. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's got a lot going on, but it does have a bit of a disconnect. The, yeah, doesn't deliver what it could based on having a PX finish. And just, just not quite not quite there, you know, not quite yeah. complete. I think two more years in the cast, mm -hmm. but I have it. Like Even a longer finish. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Someday. PX can, yeah. you, you play in with fire when you leave <laughs> things in PX for too long, because that can become, that can really take over the show. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think it's it's a whiskey that, and I, I say this often, there's whiskies with more and whiskies with less. This is a whiskey that needs a bit more <laughs> um, to really, really come into its own, I think. But at any rate, um, we'll try the last one and hope we, we didn't start, um, start with Vest at the mm. 15. The Victoriana is up next and we will be there right then. Uh, which made little sense as a sentence, but anyway, <laughs> never mind. Um, keep safe, Slanger, we'll be right back.